been a big journey from Queensland to Melbourne, then to Sydney with Belvoir, and then back to QTC, and now here. Um, is that is that important for a festival director to have had all of that stuff, all of those different sizes of jobs? And yeah, it's interesting. I mean, look, I think the, there's so many different ways of getting to the top of the hill. Mm. It's how you're going to get there. But I think there is something about exposure to practices of artists and what they do and how they make their work. Mm. Um, and also what kind of festival director you want to be. Do you want to be the kind of rah-rah kind of... Um, uh, cheerleader type which is often that happens mm. or the idea of the the coach who's there to help things along or are you the person who wants to be the star player who's doing large-scale works of your own during a festival and there's so many different types and I don't think there's any value judgment of which way but I think there's something for me having gone through and help nurture talent and uh, be part of a storytelling that's about this country mm. that is seen in my programming. Like mm. I, I love the idea of Australian work. I love the idea of um, supporting the ambitions of Australian artists to tell stories that are relevant to our, to our society now, but also to welcome in artists from around the world who have something to say to Australia and to Australian artists. Mm. Now, now, that could be to inspire them with a new form or to see how you benchmark yourself against what's going on internationally, or it could be saying, actually, these are very important themes that are going on across the globe. How are we relating to those themes and using an international artist's work to, I don't know, to, to spark a conversation sometimes. Mm -hmm. Whatever way you want to do it, you just have to decide you want to be the best of that type that you mm. can be. And your, how would you identify your type? Uh, look, well, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, am I the best at it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think what I'm trying to do is, is very much reflect our society and what are the big important issues. Mm -hmm. Now, you could say that I've done that no matter where I've gone as an artist, who's, uh, as a writer or a director mm -hmm. or running companies. I've been trying to say, what are the big important issues that arts can be the, the crest of the wave? Or in fact, even before the crest of the wave, kind of be there to help a society create the vocabulary for that change that might be coming or that we might need to deal with. Um, so no matter, that hasn't changed really. It's, mm. it's in my own makeup. So for me, I'm saying I've got my ears to the ground, if that's the right metaphor, to, to kind of listen to what's coming up from uh, a community and trying to preempt that so that we can bring big stories to the, to the fore. And that means having conversations with artists all the time. Mm. The, and, and I get caught actually because um, uh, festivals by well Sydney Festival and it's in it's the way it's worked out is very much a presenter of work. Mm. Uh, it does commission, but very rarely commission. Mm. Uh, and so the, I, I got caught sometimes as an artist. I want to get in there and make stuff and kind of shape things. So we find ourselves now producing more work than we used to. Mm. Uh, and and not that we're presenting less, but going, oh, how do we talk to artists and get them to shape work around a particular theme or something mm. like that? So uh, uh, for me, uh, the organisation has had to kind of shift and change as well around what my peculiar, you know, peccadilloes are as well. Mm. So I mm. find that interesting. I really, I really like the, um, I'm just going to have a read uh, that, that you say in the opening of the brochure, Sydney Festival is the country's cultural New Year's resolution. It seems like a, a, a very political and proactive way to look at, at programming. Yeah, well, and, and that's me responding to the fact that it's in January mm. and we come out of Christmas and New Year with a sense of freshness to the year. Mm. It's not like we've, we've already been, you know, burdened with, you know, our jobs and things. We, we Somehow we're released at the end of the year and summer allows you to kind of think differently and to be expansive. And we as Australians go, right, in January, we talk already about, you know, I'm going to eat better, I'm going to, you know, exercise more, <laughs> I'm going to spend more time with my family. We do all this kind of stuff. And so because Sydney Festival's in January, this idea of a cultural New Year's resolution to go, actually, I'm going to spend more time with my family, but the festival's going to be the time that we, I can do it. Let's go have a drink at Hyde Park. Let's go out and see yeah, a play together course, or whatever. Yeah. But this notion, too, of saying... Um, all of those New Year's resolutions are about how do I better myself as a person? How do I improve my physical being, my mental being, my spiritual being? And that the festival can offer different insights to that. Mm. So that mm. you can go, how do you better yourself in a cultural way? How do I engage in 
uh, a community experience, which is what I think good theatre is, mm. let alone performing arts, or it, the idea of a community experience where you're sitting together in a wooden O, <laughs> experiencing something together. You know, uh, what I love most about performing arts is when people laugh at the same time, cry yeah. at the same time. Intake of breath. Intake yeah, of yeah, breath. Yeah, yeah. This moment of we are sharing the air together. Mm. And that builds community in a, in a very kind of osmotic way. Yeah, you, yeah. You're picking up from each other what uh, what's right for them, what they feel like. And you feel that your humanity, your experiences as a human being are validated in front of mm. whatever, or hundreds of other people. Challenged sometimes too. Or guess, challenged yeah. as well. But we're all feeling challenged together or that kind of stuff mm. too. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting that Sydney Festival has, um, I, I'd say, four very distinct identities, and each of them has a kind of emotional response. So there's one which is a, a kind of legacy thing where, you know, ferry races and outdoor concerts and things, and there's a sense of nostalgia and warmth and connection and a sense of um, safety in that. Mm. Then there's the summer festival, this idea of the outdoors and and enjoying, embracing the summer city and there's a real sense of celebration and exuberance and that. Sometimes some people would say hedonism in that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's this emotional response of release that happens there. The International Arts Festival, the idea of bringing in these international voices or, or benchmarks international work. It's also Australian work coming up to those standards as well. And there's a sense too of, oh, if you like, you know, um, ambition, a, a sense of going, oh, are we, can we, mm. can I go further? What is it, that I, you know, a sense of adventurousness, uh, curiosity in that. And the fourth one I talk about is the disruptor, that the Sydney Festival can disrupt certain things mm. about um, the, the world and that it's all right to feel uneasy in yep. that way, to feel a little bit nervous, to feel, you know, you have to kind of gird your loins to take the next step. And all those emotional responses uh, are valid mm, mm. that you don't have we're not a single purpose festival that's trying to talk to a single audience about one thing mm. we are all of these experiences and sometimes contradictory in that mm. process it must feel uh, you know in a city the size of Sydney and a festival like this with all of that that you describe at, at, a, at a personal level it must feel quite um, uh, well, powerful is the word that comes to my head. <laughs> powerful. <laughs> Power, powerful. As that festival opens up and the fireworks start and, you know, all of that. It must be quite a thing as, a, as an artist yourself to, to, to feel that you're steering something quite yeah, it's significant. At, at the launch, I, ga I gave this speech which was talking about um, an artist sits on the precipice of both confidence and doubt. Yeah. That as artists, what we do is we need professional confidence to make sure we're not crushed by you know, the opinions of the many and, <laughs> and, and sometimes the conservative elements that tell us don't push too far, don't go too far. Mm. So we need a confidence in ourselves and what we're doing. And if you go over the ball, overboard on that, you become arrogant or disconnected and mm. are kind of up your ivory tower and kind of the plebs don't know. Um, and you also need a sense of professional doubt because it's the thing that drives you to be better. I don't know if I'm good enough yet. How do I push myself further? Is this the right thing? And that this interaction between confidence and doubt is stops you from becoming either crushed by your own sense of, you know, I'm not going to be good enough and I'm a fraud and all those kind of things, and stops you from becoming the arrogant, kind of disconnected. And so when the festival opens, I'm caught in this beautiful kind of Buddhist sense of detachment mm, of mm. just going, I'm neither one nor the other. Mm. Uh, each person's experience of the festival is their own experience. Mm. And when people will either complain or praise, mm. I'm there going, oh, asking the questions. When someone says, I love that show, I go, well, what did you love about it? Mm. You go, well, I loved it. You go, no, no, just loving it actually doesn't teach me, it doesn't give me anything. Mm, mm. I need to know why, I need to know, understand where you sit in that environment, where you sit in your expectations of, of the show or the festival itself. If you tell you, me you hate something, that's great too, but tell me why. Mm, because mm. Um, I, I, I say this thing where um, two people can see 10 shows and three they'll love and three they'll hate and four they think are in the middle, but the two people won't agree on which is which. Mm, and it's sure. in that conversation, in that debate, where the purpose, the real purpose of culture sits, mm. where we are defining culture through this kind of push and shove of our values and what we think is the right thing to do. And that the arts should, I don't, I don't care if you hate something in the festival, that's great, 
mm. then then you've taken a big risk and you've pushed yourself and the next time you see a show like that you might go oh yeah I've seen that before I don't hate it as much anymore <laughs> you know like yeah, that, that's yeah. part of what you do yeah, and and flip that around and go actually sometimes people come out going I didn't ex I didn't know what to expect but I got so excited by it mm. I you know I leapt in my soul mm. because it took me somewhere else mm. so for me at the beginning of the festival it's not a power I don't feel powerful I feel in fact quite the opposite I feel like it's just handed over mm. and I, I learned this lesson as a maker you know when you yeah. well you know what it's yeah. like when you're a writer or a director you feel that the moment I used to kind of walk around the theatre mm -hmm. on opening night walk like around the outside of it and not see the show and I remember Neil Armfield said that that was in fact incredibly arrogant that your only your experience mattered not the experience of the actors number mm -hmm. one that you've helped throughout the yeah. whole thing yeah. the audience all that stuff that you felt that your experience was the only one. And I went, oh my God. And it tipped me over. And he told me the story that in Germany, there's the um, very symbolic thing that uh, after the last preview, the, the actors kind of help the director out of the theater and they symbolically leave the theater oh, wow. as a way of saying, now it's up to us. Yeah. And I go, yeah, my job then as, as a director anyway, or as a, a writer, is to be there for them. Mm. And I love that. And so as the festival, I'm, I'm more practicing that idea of, what do you, the artists who are making it and the audience who are receiving it, how do you engage in the idea? And how do I understand that a little bit more? Mm. And with the idea of, I mean, we're here to sort of principally talk about the Australian content in the program, but I'm interested to know what your kind of approach and thinking about international content is, in not just in your own festival, but in festivals in general, because I think it's, you know, if, you, if you're talking about Woodstock or Aix-en-Provence or so, you know, mm -hmm. Europe or North America, that, that idea is uh, slightly less of an issue. But in Australia, I, I think it, it, it is a, a really big thing, the idea of, of, of international work, because mm. it's, it's so very hard to get to otherwise for lots and lots of people. Mm. And what, what contribution that makes in the mix? I think we need to go back to the, the historical role of festivals. If we think like Sydney Festival is what, 42 years old now and, and Adelaide and Perth are, are a few years older than that. This notion that these festivals were the window onto the world. It mm. was um, before the internet, before cheap yeah, flights. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, w w if we're talking back in the 50s and 60s, people would go and live in, in Europe or in North America or wherever, live in Paris mm. for a period of time to get an idea of uh, the benchmarking of what's good, what's not good. You do these exchange programs with people, uh, different companies. And I, I did one in the early 2000s where you go off and you spend time at the Comédie Française watching how they do their business. Or, or I mean, I remember Ariane Manushkin and sitting there going, well, this is a waste of time. We'll never be able to do this in Australia. We don't have the resources that they have, yeah, yeah. but at least you know what's there. With all the information sharing that's possible now, festivals play a different role. I think that we see ourselves in concert with the rest of the world. We say, actually, look at this and this and this and this, and how do we do it here? And we kind of engage in a little bit more of a dialogue mm. between the local, or the national then in that case, and the international. It's not so much that we sit back and watch it and just passively receive it. We are now actively going, yes, oh, actually, I see that influence. You know, that the, the kind of whole, um, what I call the German aesthetic. Yeah, you know, the yeah. German aesthetic washed through in the late 90s into the 2000s and washed through the, the country. And we were all going, oh, how do we, and do I engage? And what kind of Perspex box am I going <laughs> to use? And <laughs> Can I afford a glass box? Yeah, can I do this? And what's the glitter drop going to feel like? And uh, Because our work was in, in relationship to, and was, you know, in terms of timing, happening at the same time. Mm. Whereas before there was always this lag. There used to be the thing where, uh, I remember some of my first international trips uh, a, a, as a young artist, and I'd go see something, and I'd come back to Australia, and I'd see some something very similar, you know, a couple of years later mm. on on stages. Going, you just did what I did, and you just you just <laughs> took that idea and kind of you know, and, and there was a lot of that kind of just um, holus bolus taking someone else's idea and putting it into your. Into your, into your show and getting away with it in Australia. Mm. And I don't think that's possible anymore. I mm. think there's a real sense that, you know, this ongoing dialogue between, you know. And, and, and an arts community, as you say, because of cheaper flights and so on, that is, that is essentially very internationally focused. Mm. 
Most artists. Well, yeah, I don't around. know about you, but how often do you just hit the internet and just read reviews of yeah, yeah. things from companies that you, you, you're excited by and mm. interested in and festivals that are going on around the place? And you, you, know, you start to just, your, your information, your hunger for information is, is much more. Mm. Well, maybe not your hunger, but your ability to feed that hunger is a lot more. So then, in that, w w given that context, then Australian work and the idea of presenting or developing or commissioning Australian work in festivals has also changed its it, its purpose, mm. I guess, in, in in the last twenty twenty five years. Um, and certainly, you, you know, as a as a festival director yourself, you're very very identified with that shift uh, yeah. in terms of making sure. Lots of Australian work, and and not just, I mean, it's diverse Australian work. You know, from from in in, in terms of of performers and content and geography, um, is 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 a large part of the thinking of the festival. Um, has that been a difficult thing to do, or was it? Mm. There are different pulleys and levers. And we think talking about 20 years ago, we're mm. talking about the major festivals initiative that was started, which was a, a large amount of money for the commissioning of Australian work um, and, and works of scale that could be equal to the international works that come in after you know two years of touring and yeah. five years of development. They land on our shores and everyone goes, that's amazing. And the new Australian work that's just newly commissioned sits up beside it and everyone goes, oh, Australian work's not so good, is it? This work's amazing. And the MFI was was all about trying to bolster that work and develop it more and give it uh, at least a launching pad to be, you know, up, up against there. And interesting, in 20 years, the MFI has done roughly 52 works, funded 52 works over 20 years. Um, it was interesting. I did some numbers and looking at there's only one work that was uh, written and directed by an Aboriginal artist. Wow. But about six or seven works that you could say had Indigenous content in mm. them. Mm. And when you look at works of uh, culturally and lingu linguistically diverse groups, you start to go, oh, it gets down to like, it's less than one handful. It's, it's quite interesting that the work that we've been doing over the last 20 years hasn't kind of fulfilled the ambitions for all the artists. And this might be just a period of time that we're going, okay, we've been developing over that 20 year period, more diverse voices, uh, uh, looking at gender equity in a much stronger sense, especially in the last, let's say, 10 years, though there are cycles of that that go yeah, through, um, in the sense of kind of building and building and building. And why am I saying that? Because I think that the, the big ambitions for Australian work is to reflect the society that we're living in. Yeah. And still now, I don't think we, we're seeing that easy kind of reflection it's still a much bigger process and so my job and, and it's been part of my whole kind of raison d'etre as an artist is to make sure that the voices of those who are often silenced or not given a platform get a platform mm. and mm. as an indigenous artist that's always the case mm. but I'm thinking I've got a much broader brief in the role of running the Sydney Festival mm. that I've got okay how do I do that so yes the Australian content is up big time mm as you would expect, that's my kind of mm. way of doing it. Mm. And the way I'm inviting in international artists in is different as well. Mm. I'm, I'm as j just as interested in their content as I am in their form, mm. saying, what story do you have to tell? And how are you relating to what I call the, the, the mega narratives in Australia at the moment around, uh, I, I identify there are four mega narratives that are interesting me at the moment. Things around um, indigenous, first nations, sovereignty, uh, conversations of historical uh, disempowerment of First Nations people and how that actually diminishes the whole nation mm. because we are still kind of uncertain in mm. ourselves mm. so we need to deal with that the idea of consumption environment uh, relationship to landscape um, uh, environmental issues yes but also about how the sustainability of our our humanity is so that kind of big theme the idea of safety and fleeing um, uh, refugees, yes, but also this idea that where is where are you safe in the home, and how that sometimes the biggest issues that we face are when our expectations of safety are are, are not fulfilled, mm. be they violence in the home, be they refugees in in camps, be they on on water issues kind of coming here. That's the big one, and then this other one, which is around. Um, the analog body, we as analog beings, 
living in an increasingly digital landscape yeah. and how are we kind of relating to those. So those kind of four mega themes seem to be out there as artists are kind of talking about stuff. Now, I haven't come to those themes going, now I'll go find work that fits into them. They come from uh, seeing and reading and listening to artists from all over the globe and these seem to be themes that are not uh, we all seem to be engaging in them somehow. Mm. I haven't seen many artists who aren't engaging in those kind of ideas. They're, they're mega themes, they're big things. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't like to think that a festival is programmed by thematics, but by listening to artists and how artists are relating to their community. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a brilliant festival. It always is. It always You're is. You're very welcome. <laughs> Come along. Um, and just to know that Sydney Festival is all of the joy and all of the stimulation. So, you know, come along. Thanks, Wesley. Thank you. <laughs>